taken avant-garde circles, in part because they had this mystique. They came out of the May 68 ferment and were wild and antagonistic and suitably deranged for their era. And they put out a few records through a major label, which was perverse. Within the catalog of this group that was supposed to be just the most extreme, aggressive, far-flung beast, there was a record that even their fans found unlistable. No one owned it. No one could find it. No one had heard it. The people that had heard it hated it. And that was outside the Dream Syndicate, which was the record they made with this guy named Tony Conrad, and no one knew who Tony Conrad was. In uh, 1972, I had gotten my violin out, got it back in shape to go and play in Germany with Lamont. And I thought, like, I'd love to have a chance to record in a little studio somewhere some of this sound because I think it's very special. And I went and recorded with members of this band, Faust. I called this recording outside the Dream Syndicate because I'd left and I. You know, like I wanted actually to do, separate myself from Lamont. I was outside, I wasn't doing it, I was doing film. No one had ever put two and two together. You know, that Tony Conrad, the filmmaker, and Tony Conrad, the guy that made the record with Faust, that no one wanted to hear were the same person. And I knew that this Tony Conrad character, the filmmaker, was a professor at the University of New York at Buffalo. I called information in Buffalo, called the university, asked for the media studies department. We released Outside the Dream Syndicate at the end of 1993 and within a year had managed to draw Tony out from beneath the shadow of Faust and establish that this record was a Tony Conrad record. Tony's own story and his history and his performance idiom and his music were all more than fascinating enough to get people talking about Tony Conrad. There was a, a great deal of curiosity. It was one of the few pieces of experimental music that actually on an emotional level resonated with me. In the course of my life, I've been exposed to some experimental music where it's more interesting to read about it than listen to it. Whereas other experimental musicians like Tony Conrad, it's actually really compelling to listen to the music. there is still sort of like a chaotic spontaneity. Because sometimes the chaos can be very informative.
The uh, great impresario of the label Table of the Elements, uh, Jeff Hunt, put together a festival in Atlanta, Georgia. And I went down and played my violin. He looked up and he said, you can play. And I said, I know I can play. And that was the first time that a lot of the people in the experimental music community really got a vivid blast of what it was that, that Tony Conrad was doing. The second that Tony put that sheet up and turned the light on, this three-story tall Tony all of a sudden appeared on the sheet. It wasn't about him anymore. It was this thing that he was creating, and there was nothing else like that at the festival. It, it really separated him from everybody else. Like, this guy is a next-level thinker about uh, how to present yourself and also how to present the work and, what, and to create the context in which you present the work. It also told me I, had to, I, I was going to have to work a lot harder at this, and I was going to have to hold myself to a much higher standard. You know, I 